Welcome back to another tutorial with 8042 Media. We are going to surprise one of our clients with a intro and we're going to be using and showing you in the meantime how to use and create this mosaic logo reveal from Motion Array. All right, so um, if we just go ahead and click on this logo, this is the one that you guys are trying to use in your project. Let me mute that. If you guys want to use this in your project, um, you can see very cool outro animation for your video. We're just going to go ahead and click download. Of course, you need a Motion Array account to use this template. I'm just going to quickly save it to my downloads folder. And this contains 56 media placeholders and one logo placeholder. Um, the other important thing to note is no plugins are required. So you guys only will need After Effects if that's not downloaded on your computer. I've recorded a separate tutorial on this channel where you guys can go ahead and get that installed prior to going through this video. Now, a lot of these related templates, you guys can also use um, or use in the similar way that uh, we're creating this template. So you know, whether you're working off this one or any other one, this video is going to be very helpful for you. I'm going to come back once this has downloaded. But in the meantime, go ahead, look for 56 media placeholders, um, gather your footage, you can put it in a specific folder before you get started or just follow along. All right, you guys, this has downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and click to show it in the folder. It's going to show wherever you downloaded, you want to right click this template and then go ahead and press extract all. And that's going to unzip this file so we can open it. And we're looking for the After Effects um, project file. Okay, once you get that, just go ahead and double click it. And After Effects is automatically going to start opening up. This tutorial is going to be a little bit longer. But if you follow through step by step, you'll be able to create this no problem. Sometimes you'll get these warnings when After Effects opens. Just go ahead, press OK and you will see that the project must be converted. It was created on a different version of After Effects. That's usually the case, uh, but you just go ahead and press OK and your computer should load the entire template. Okay, so as you can see here, um, when we open up the template, it doesn't come with all the media that we previewed. Instead, you have these numbers, you know, like 1, 5, 53, 40. So, if you want to specifically customize, you know, which videos show where, you can do that by watching this template and seeing, okay, number one is going to be the first video in the template, and then number five is going to be here. So instead of randomly importing videos, you can, you know, strategically put them in places that you want. Uh, for the sake of time and for my needs for this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and import videos randomly. And how you're going to do that is come up to the edits uh, folder on the top left and you will see here all the different placeholders. Okay, so let's take placeholder one, for example, we're going to double click on that and notice that it opened a new sequence in our timeline. So if I wanted to jump back to where I was previously, I can by just clicking this final sequence, it's titled final. Or I can come to placeholder one and you will see that right now all that's in placeholder one is this text, right? Zero one. And that is reflective of what you see on the final placeholder. All right, so we can go ahead and bring in our first video. Um, how you want to do that is just simply, you know, look for uh, a video that you would like to import. I'm going to go ahead and import this one and just simply drag and drop it directly onto the project here on the left hand side. All right. Then what you want to do is you want to bring in your uh, project file and you want to scale it to the frame size. All right. So we can right click, we can come up to transform and we can just say fit to comp. Now, if it's a horizontal video, um, it is going to automatically fit to the comp. All right. And if it's a vertical video or something else, you might need to change the 
entire sequence, okay? But just go ahead and, you know, bring the video to a place where you want it to be, all right? Let's say there. And then you can see if you come back to the final sequence, you can see if we preview over this first video icon, there you go. You can see that it has imported successfully. All right, so number one is good to go. We're gonna come up to placeholder number two and we're gonna repeat this process uh, 56 times, all right? I'm gonna show you two more and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this entire template and come back, all right? So we're gonna just be locating for another video. Let's say we wanna import this guy. All right, same thing, I imported it. If it does look a little weird here, it's because you're previewing it. Uh, sometimes these templates import previews, that 25%, 12.5%. You can go ahead and say fit if you would like, um, or you know, 100 or whatever, however you would like to preview it. Sometimes previewing it at 50 or less than 100 is convenient because you can actually see the full size of this video. So I know that it's in 4K, it's a little bigger, so I'm going to right click transform fit to comp we're going to just move this a little bit so that we don't see the lower third that comes in i don't want that in my template all right and there you go placeholder two is imported i'm going to go to placeholder three we'll just do this one more time and let's go ahead and select a different video select this one go ahead and drag it in I'm going to right click transform fit to comp and you can keep these placeholders open if you'd like um, to go in and easily change them or I like to delete the previous ones and leave the last one that I did so I can remember where I'm at if I need to get up grab some coffee uh, placeholder number three so I'm gonna go ahead and click on placeholder number four and we can come into our final project and just simply watch uh, depending on the speed and graphics cards of your computer this usually plays in slow motion if it even does play but I like to drag you know I can drag my cursor and you can see here we have a few of our of our placeholders going right one two three all right so we're on four I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these 56 and then check in all right, we have completed the 56 placeholders. So as you can see, if you are in your final comp and you go ahead and select over any portion, it's all filled in with your footage. All right, um, the next step is logo. All right, so at the very end, you guys will see that it kind of fades to white, this mosaic template, and it leaves you with a white background and a logo all right i'm going to show you if your logo is white or if your logo is dark like a light logo or a dark logo how you can customize this template so it works for you what you want to do after going through and adding footage for all the placeholders let's go ahead and open the logo placeholder now i am going to be bringing in a logo um, this specific logo is for the Iron Sights podcast, so I just downloaded that from the internet, and I'm going to go ahead and drag it right into this sequence, all right? We want to transform it so that it fits uh, to the right size, all right? Um, right in between these kind of two lines right here is going to be the best placement for the logo. Um, as you guys can see, I can adjust here. If you're having some speed troubles and it's super slow, you can make it preview in a quarter of the quality, but it will kind of look blurry. You might get a little confused as to why your logo looks blurry. It's just because you're previewing it in quality, but we can go ahead and press full. So my logo happens to be white, um, which is similar to the background that this template fades into. You can't even see the logo because the logo is white and the background here is white. So if you guys are working with a dark logo, you shouldn't need to make any other changes. You should see your logo and you guys are ready to export. If you're working with a white logo, you can go ahead and make sure you're in the final sequence here. And we're gonna go open up the controls 
and open up the effects and you guys will see background color here is set to white. So I'm going to click that and just go ahead and set that to black or whatever you want. And then your logo is going to show up. And then you can again click here and preview kind of the, the template if your computer allows you to. But we're ready to export this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. And then I'm going to show you one more on a secret that I use, which is after this exports, I'm going to bring it into Premiere Pro editing software that we cover a lot of quick, simple tutorials on so that we can actually change this even more. We can select which bits look the best. A lot of times these After Effects templates can add a ton of cool edits to your footage, but it's much easier to work with it and edit it and customize it by bringing it into Premiere Pro. We're going to come up to File, hover over Export, and click Add to Render Queue. This is going to bring up our render queue where we can click on the output mode and I'm going to change this to AVI from QuickTime and the channels can stay at RGB. I'm going to go ahead and press OK and then you can save it to a specific folder by clicking here output to and I'm going to go ahead and save this just to this backup hard drive and then we're just going to click render. All right. And depending on your computer speed, it's going to take, you know, anywhere from a few minutes to upwards of an hour. Uh, and then once it's done, I'll come back, show you what it looks like and bring it into Premiere Pro. All right. So I just opened up Premiere Pro now that this has finished exporting. And what I want to show you guys is the ability you will have once these After Effects templates do finish exporting. I'm going to go ahead and locate that file, which is right here, drag it straight into Premiere Pro. Um, I am working off a of 4K sequence and this video is 1080 by 1080. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click, select scale to frame size. I'm going to unlink this and just delete the audio for the sake of this video. And you guys will be able to see now that we have our template fully exported. And in Premiere Pro, we change the black background and we have our Iron Sights intro ready to go. What I like to do and why I just wanted to show you this now is you can actually, you know, go in and select frame by frame. That's where the frame changes. And I can separate out these clips whenever they kind of change their sequence. And I can use them at different points within the edit. So I can move them around. You know, if I wanted to include some footage in the middle here, um, I could do that. Let's say I wanted to grab, you know, one of these clips and move that over. So now I have an action shot that isn't part of this template, right? And then it comes back into the template. So that's what I like to do is I like to export those videos from After Effects, then bring them into Premiere Pro and use them to create and bring to life my videos that are edited in Premiere Pro. If you're not sure how to edit in Premiere Pro, you want to learn a bunch of other tricks, subscribe to the channel, check out our Premiere Pro playlist. We have all kinds of content related to Premiere Pro. Thanks for watching.